Hi everyone, welcome back to Garden Haven Homestead. Today I'm out in the garden and I'm going to be harvesting something that I think is kind of overlooked in the home garden and maybe it's something that people just throw away or compost and that is broccoli greens. They're actually one of my favorite things to harvest from the garden and most people grow a broccoli plant for the actual crown or head of the plant and broccoli greens are not something that you would normally maybe find at the store or think to harvest from your plants but when you think about it for the amount of space a broccoli plant takes up if you're only harvesting just that crown you're not really getting a lot of use out of that space and a lot of that plant could go to waste if you're not eating it and I think that broccoli greens are absolutely delicious and when I'm saying broccoli greens this actually goes for a lot of different brassica greens so things like cauliflower kohlrabi maybe even like the outer leaves of cabbage all of those are edible and I think that they're delicious you can cook them like you would any other hearty green and I think the thing that they compare best to is probably collard greens so any way you could cook collard greens you could do the same thing with broccoli greens so that's actually what I'm going to be doing today after I harvest these greens I'm going to be doing sort of like a southern style braised greens and we're actually going to be doing like a whole southern themed meal so I'm going to show you the other things I'm going to cook as well but I think that's going to be a great use for the broccoli greens another way I really like to eat them is if I'm going to be cooking a super stew that's boiling for a really long time so in the fall and winter I do a lot of soups with beans or lentils in my pressure cooker and since those are going in the pressure cooker for like maybe 20 ish minutes that will really cook the greens down and make them really tender because these can be a little bit more fibrous and they need a longer cooking time so something like a long cooking soup or like a braised green is going to be a great use for these broccoli greens so here's a look at the plant that I'm going to be harvesting a lot from today. This is the broccoli plant that I just harvested and you'll have seen that video because it will be out before this one. But I harvested the crown of the plant, you can see where it came from, and I am going to pick all of the leaves today. You can see how beautiful they look. They really do just look like collard greens. Like you probably wouldn't even tell a difference. And these greens look wonderful. There are no like bug holes in them. So it would really be a shame to just throw them out. So we're going to pick those today. And I may also pick some of my cauliflower leaves as well. So here you can see a little cauliflower growing. And here's what those leaves look like. They're a little different from the broccoli leaves. I actually think these ones look more like collards because they're not as like frilled on the edges. They're more of like a flat leaf. So I'm going to pick some of those as well just so that I have a lot of greens because with any green, especially if you're cooking it for a long time, they do shrink down a lot. So I want to make sure I have plenty. And here's another cauliflower leaf. It's massive. Maybe I'll grab that one. So yeah, I'm going to get to harvesting. Before I do, let me just give you a quick look at this row just to give you a little update on how it's doing since it has been quite a journey for us this year. Here's a look at some of the zucchini plants that we popped in where we had empty spaces from any brassica plants that got eaten. And I've taken the cover off of these plants because the plants are blooming now. So I want to let the bees in to pollinate the zucchini flowers. And you can see we have zucchini forming here. This is the first one of the season, which is really exciting. And that one's going to be ready to pick in like a couple of days. So I feel like that happened really quickly. And here's a look at a yellow summer squash, which is also forming some squash now. So that's really cool, great to see. But anyway, we are here for the broccoli greens for this video, so let's get to harvesting. So I only took the leaves of like two plants and I already have this entire little tub of greens which I think is going to be enough. For the cauliflower I made sure to only take the outer leaves because the cauliflower is still growing 
and cauliflower kind of needs the leaves to like shade it as it's growing. But here is what we ended up with. It's going to shrink down a lot when I cook this, but look at the size of this leaf. Can you imagine just like throwing all of this food away just because you think that you're only growing the plant for the cauliflower, but don't sleep on those leaves. They're absolutely wonderful. So I'm going to show you what I'm going to cook up tonight. We're going to have pinto beans that I'm cooking with ham. Then I'm going to braise these broccoli greens, and then we're going to have some cornbread as well. So it's going to be like a full Southern feast. So let's get these washed up and we'll get cooking. I'm starting off by cooking my pinto beans. I'm going to be using my Instant Pot to cook my beans since it makes really quick work of it. And I have three cups of pinto beans that I have washed and soaked for a few hours. Then I'm going to add one onion that I have quartered as well as a couple of garlic cloves and a couple of bay leaves. Next I have a ham bone that was kicking around in my freezer. This was left over from a Christmas ham. Traditionally you would use a ham hock to make southern style beans but this ham bone will work just as well to help flavor the beans. I also added a couple teaspoons of salt as well as a tablespoon of Cajun seasoning. With all of these flavorings and spices, these beans are going to have plenty of flavor. I'm adding more water to top off everything and make sure everything is submerged. And before I cook everything, I'm just giving the beans a nice mix with all of the seasonings to make sure everything's evenly distributed. Then I'm going to pop the lid on my Instant Pot and I'm going to be pressure cooking this for 12 minutes since my beans have been soaked, but if they were unsoaked, you could probably do about 15 to 16 minutes. While that's going, I'm going to get the green started that we just harvested. In my Dutch oven, I'm adding a couple tablespoons of vegetable oil. And normally I would use onion for this first step, but I have been harvesting some leeks from the garden. So I have about three leeks here that I thinly sliced up. I use the white and light green parts as well as a lot of the dark green parts because this is going to cook for a really long time so it's going to be great to soften up the dark green parts of the leek. I also added a few cloves of garlic which I left pretty large because again this is going to cook down and the garlic is going to get really soft so I didn't need to chop it up too finely. While I let the leeks and garlic cook and soften up a bit, I'm gonna start prepping my greens. So I'm taking a few leaves at a time, and since my leaves are very large, I'm going to cut them in half widthwise. Then I can stack the halves on top of each other and start chopping. And you can see I'm leaving a lot of the stem on there. Normally I would cut this part out if I was going to be doing like a quick cook on the greens because the stems would stay a little bit too tough. But we're going to be cooking these greens for over an hour, probably close to like two hours. So those stems are not going to be a problem at all. They're going to soften up and add really nice texture to the greens. So I'm chopping the entire leaf and stem down. And as I get closer to like the leafier part. Sometimes it helps to roll it up a little bit more so it's easier to slice. And I have these nice kind of like ribbon shapes for the leafier part of the greens. As I'm preparing these greens, I'm just going to start adding them to the pot. You'll have to do this in batches because it's a lot of volume at first and for each batch that I add in, it'll wilt down in the pot while I'm preparing the next batch of greens and then I'll add that one. And even though you start with like an enormous bundle of greens, eventually they will all wilt down and become just a fraction of what they started as. And those broccoli and cauliflower greens are just the perfect thing to make for this meal because you're really able to cram so many greens into this one dish. And if you went out to buy those greens, you would have to get like three to four bundles of collards. And we basically just took like almost like a waste product from our broccoli plants. Now I'm adding my last batch of greens here 
and this will end up taking about half of my Dutch oven. And once I have all of my greens in there, I'm going to add my seasonings. I'm going to add some more salt to season as well as a couple of teaspoons of Cajun seasoning. I'm also going to add a little bit of water just to make sure that the pan doesn't get too dry on the bottom and the greens don't burn. I'm also adding a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar, which I feel like is a really essential flavoring for this style of greens. And normally for these greens, you would also flavor this with a ham hock, but I'm going to take Take the ham bone that will be left over from the beans in a little bit and add that to the greens. That's still cooking with the beans right now, but I'll add it later on, which you'll see. So I'm just gonna let that soften up and boil away for a little bit with the lid on my pot. Meanwhile, I'm going to prepare the last part of this meal, which is going to be a cornbread. And in a bowl, I just dumped one of my homemade cornbread mixes where I just mixed all of the dry ingredients for cornbread in a container. And this makes it really easy for me to whip up cornbread. So that has the cornmeal, flour, salt, baking powder, and sugar. And then all I have to add are the wet ingredients, which are butter, an egg, and milk. And this is a really easy quick bread. You just have to mix everything together in one bowl. And then I'm going to dump this into an eight by eight Pyrex dish. And that's going to bake at 400 degrees for 30 to 35 minutes. Once my pinto beans have finished cooking and I've released the pressure from my instant pot, here is what they look like. They smell absolutely incredible. The seasonings were just so amazing on these beans. And you can see how that ham bone is kind of like falling apart after just 12 minutes in the pressure cooker. And the beans are so perfectly cooked. They are really soft and creamy. And you can see how much like richness there is in that broth as well. And those onion pieces were super soft and basically fell apart once I started to mix them. So I've removed the ham bone from those beans and this is what the broccoli greens are looking like after 30 minutes. I'm going to add in the ham bone here and I've also picked off some of that meat that I'm going to mix in with the greens as well. This is going to add some richness that is going to flavor the greens really nicely. And these greens still have to go for about another hour. You really, really wanna cook these like basically to death for this style of greens. We're not looking for like crisp, vibrant, bright green leaves here. We really want them to be like a dull green that will just melt in your mouth after being cooked for a long, long time. So these are gonna cook for plenty of time with that leftover ham bone to add extra flavor. I also took some of that broth from the beans because I tasted it and it was so delicious and I thought it would be great to flavor the greens with. So I added about a half cup of those to the greens and then I cooked those for another hour. This is what the greens look like at the end. You can see how tender they look and they're just like those pieces of the rich ham in there. The beans are also super creamy and flavorful. And then we finished off the meal with a slice of cornbread on the side as well. Sometimes I like to top this kind of meal off with some of my green tomato relish. In the South, this is known as chow chow, and it's a great way to preserve those green tomatoes at the end of the year. And it brings some nice vinegary brightness to top off the meal. And we just enjoyed this combination of things so much. I think it was a great way to use up the broccoli greens. They taste just like collards, which is the traditional green that you would use in this recipe. So if you've got any broccoli or cauliflower plants out there, make sure that you are eating those greens as well because when you cook them properly and for a long time, they can be really, really delicious and we don't have to let those greens go to waste. So I hope this video gave you guys some ideas. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you again in the next one.